I'm a man. So I think I'm not that special. Therefore, I just do the work regardless of how I feel and to make matters worse, I swallow my emotions. However, I think my case is genuinely special. So I want you guys to listen and let me know what you think your help will be highly appreciated. Here's my story. They say that time heals everything. Plus, they say you just need a new woman to move on. I'm now engaged and back home with my fiancé, but my anger toward my ex will just not go away that easily. I'm 39 years old already and was 18 when I met my ex Marisol. During that time, I was a member of a Latin Kings band. I had been in that gang for five years and always found myself in and out of trouble. Thankfully, Marisol helped me change for the good. She was a church girl. So she was the complete opposite of what I was. We were like night and day, somehow I thought we would complement each other. You'll understand why I was wrong. But anyway, let me explain to you how I met her. My grandma, a pious and devoted Catholic, dragged me to Sunday Mass. And when I saw Marisol, I fell in love right off the bat. I asked my cousin who was a friend of hers if he could introduce me to her, but he refused. He said that he didn't want me to ruin her. He was right. But she got my head in the clouds. Have you ever met someone that you wanted to make yourself better to be with? Wanted to be that man who would walk the right path. That was her when I found out that she was going to church almost every day. I hung out by the steps talking to her. I always walked her to and from church. She made me feel like I wasn't worthless. I forgot my love for Jesus Christ. But she was like a faith reminder to me. I felt like the Holy Spirit was invading me. On top of that, I finally gave up on gang life, got my GED and became a regular churchgoer. One thing led to another and we ended up dating. I couldn't stop thinking of our promising future together away from the dangers of the gang lifestyle. However, I got unintentionally pulled back in, I was at a store and ran into someone that I used to have problems with. They were running their mouths and I tried to ignore it. I swear I did. I just let them talk and I walked away but then I got stabbed in the shoulder blade and lost my mind. I beat that man. I just couldn't accept this violence. Plus I'd probably die if I didn't fight back anyway, I got arrested and suddenly it was like the things I did to make my life better vanished. Marisol was mad at me. My grandmother kept bringing up my past mistakes and my cousin was telling me that he knew that I wasn't going to change. Those tribulations were just a God's test, I guess. But it hurt me to hear those words of unappreciated and distrust. My public defender saw me trying to better myself and by the grace of God Almighty got me off after a month in lockup, despite being angry with me, my soul visited me almost daily. I really appreciated her understanding and for me, she was the light at the end of the tunnel. I endured that unjust imprisonment just to be with her again. A month after I got out, I found out I was going to be a father and I didn't want my kid to have a dad that was dead or in jail. God blessed me with a son. And another huge test that would tell if it was a man of value or not only when you're forced to improve, you improve and feeding a family and providing for your, your woman is a huge example of that. I didn't want to be an absent father or get killed. I did not want Marisol to become a single mom. I wanted to do good deeds. Not only to seek God's pleasure, but also to thank Marisol for helping me get back to my faith and escape my former lifestyle. I saw this situation as a blessing, but I just didn't know that I would get tested even more. After nine months, I then went to a trade school to become a mechanic. And I hustled for my future family. When Luna was born, it was almost the worst day of my life. Marisol wouldn't stop bleeding. She went into shock and they had to give her a double hysterectomy. She was in the hospital for months and Luna became my world. I wanted her life to be the best. I wanted to give her the world. When Marisol was released, I promised her that our daughter will have a life far better than ours. And for years, I kept that promise. I saved enough money to move us to the suburbs and became homeowners. 
I made sure Luna went to private school, knew how to defend herself and always made sure I was the perfect husband. I didn't know my parents. Plus I didn't have a positive male role model in my life. So I didn't know what a healthy relationship looked like. Television dances were my male role models and I mimicked them and the marriage they had on television as the years went by, I owned my own garage. My cousin became a pastor. My grandmother was still a pain in my neck. My relationship with my wife was stronger than ever and I made sure I kept my prison body. But Luna hated me since she turned 13. She just started hating me. She didn't want me to hug her, rolled her eyes. Every time I told her I loved her. Ignored me. When I asked her about her day in school, it hurt me and Marisol saw it. She told me that she was a teenager and that I should just let it ride. She will come back to me for two years. It was like that. So for her quinceanera, I wanted to go all out cut everything she wanted and she was still disrespectful briefly. The old me almost came out just to put her in her place. But instead I went to my cousin vented my frustration and doubts about being a good father. And he told me to just let her be. And he said a prayer for me. I wanted a slideshow for the father-daughter dance. I got a chunk of the pictures of us together. But I realized I didn't have any recent pictures of us. She didn't want to take any. The last time I had pictures of her and me smiling with me was on her 13th birthday and those were on my daughter's broken tablet. I took that tablet went to a repair shop and I didn't care about the cost. I needed that tablet fixed after a day and $300 the tech fixed it. And I was happy I knew her passcode, but I never bothered invading her privacy. I just wanted those pictures. And when I opened that tablet and looked in the gallery there, they were my little girl smiling and happy to be with me. I felt great. Then the instant messages appeared. It was my daughter talking to my wife. It was a long banter that she didn't want me to dance with her and it did hurt. But as my wife said, she's being a teenager, then she said something that destroyed me. She asked why she had to do the father-daughter dance with me since I'm not her father, I felt my heart stop, got dizzy, my mouth dried up and I needed to sit down. My wife responded that I raised her. I loved her and that makes me her father. But Luna responded by saying that my cousin is her father and she can't wait for her to turn 18. So she could tell me the truth and she could live with her real dad that she hated me, that she thanked God that I'm not her father. Marisol began cursing her out, saying that it was a mistake for my cousin to tell her the truth two years ago. And the more they talked the angrier I got my wife lied to me for 15 years. My cousin, whom I can find my issues about Luna and my fears about being a bad father. Not only slept with my wife but had me raise his child. I wanted to hurt them. I felt a mixture of anger, sorrow and grief. I wanted to scream, cry and die at the same time if that makes any sense. Not only did I believe that my wife was faithful. The very guy who was supporting me during my tough times, my cousin was the kid's father. That's a double betrayal. But you know what? Revenge is a dish best served cold. It was about time to give these traitors a taste of their own medicine. I went to a dark place so I wouldn't do anything stupid. I told Marissa that I needed to focus on work so I could pay for that. And instead I drove to Manhattan and saw my old public defender who wasn't a low-level attorney anymore. He had a nice expensive firm near Midtown East. I was surprised that he remembered me. But apparently I was his first case as a public defender. We sat down and I told him everything, gave him the tablet and when he turned it on the messages just kept coming. Only this time, Luna was talking to my cousin, her real father and he was telling her to give me a chance how I was always there for her. But Luna told him that. So was he how it makes sense that they have so much in common and even called him Pappy multiple times in their conversation. And he responded and told her that she was his little girl. We went through our options and he asked me what I wanted to do and I told him that I wanted to go full scorched earth. I wanted to poison the well, and he asked me several times if that is what I wanted and nodded. 
I also told him that everything had to be filed before the K era in two weeks. So we sat down and spent the next 12 hours on what needed to be done. And I followed his instructions to the letter. I secretly placed my business for sale. I called the private school and told them that I will not be paying for next year. I closed the college account and the savings that I had for Luna and prepared to place my house for sale online. There was only one thing I deviated from the day of the quinceanera that day went off without a hitch. The whole family was there. Luna was smiling and having fun. Marisol kept asking me if I was okay and I lied to her. It was hard not to hate her. She knowingly let me raise another man's child. She slept with my cousin, a man who saw me as my brother and the godfather of my child. So the rage was hard to suppress to say the least when it was time for the father-daughter dance. I called her to the center of the stage. She looked annoyed, but walked over. I had the music playing and her smile tore me apart for years. I wanted to see that smile again. And now I didn't want it as we danced. I had the slideshow playing. Then there were pictures of the two of us and towards the end of the song, screenshots of her text messages with her mother and real father, my wife. The cheater learned the hard way why the Bible criminalizes adultery. And my cousin learned the hard way why you shouldn't put your hands on another man's woman. Both acts have severe consequences. Needless to say this didn't bode too well. Marisol looked like she saw a ghost. Luna just kept staring at the large screen and my cousin just stared at me with fear. Marisol ran to me and told me that she could explain and I told her that I filed for a divorce. She could explain it in court. She grabbed my arm begging me and I pulled back. I told Luma that I worked a lot to give her the world and now she doesn't deserve it. I began to walk out but not before telling my cousin that every time I see him, I'm going to knock him out, then I knocked him out. The aftermath was harsh. Marisol and Luna were at my grandmother's apartment. Her family was shocked and disgusted with her. They wanted nothing to do with her. Her father actually apologized to me. I don't know why he never liked me. Despite turning my life around that man hated me. But now I was the perfect husband and father. But just a few days prior, I was the devil incarnate. My grandmother had the audacity to tell me about the story of Abraham and how and came back from battle. Three years later, his wife had a one-year-old child and he raised him as his own and how I should be like Abraham. So I told her to get out of my house. All those religious people were the biggest sinners on the planet in my eyes. I admit my past sins, especially the years as a gang member. But at least I gave up on that lifestyle and became a good provider and husband. In contrast, these religious individuals were nothing but traitors. She wanted to go to therapy, but I just didn't feel like it once a cheater, always a cheater. Plus, she thought I was overreacting to make matters worse. She acted like she was a telenovela actress blowing up my phone after she learned that I sold my business and I put her house on sale to this day. I don't know what hurts the most being lied to by a woman who you thought was the love of your life or having a child whose life you tried to improve and give the world just toss you aside like trash. Fortunately, I didn't need to pay any child support and the female judge was absolutely fair. God bless her for her understanding. I'm a man well treated by the judicial system. That's a great accomplishment. Still, I'm not over what she did. P. You escaped a toxic lifestyle and came back to your faith. That's admirable. And you're a great example of discipline. It's natural that you reacted badly when that gangster stabbed you in the shoulder and you should not have been put in prison. However, all this proves is that Marisol wasn't the one for you since she cheated on you with your cousin and lied to you for 15 years. Once a cheater, always a cheater and let's not forget your cousin. He's a traitor too. Now that you're not providing for your ex-wife and your cousin's kid, they're both contacting you and trying to make things up. Keep in mind that you've just made the right decision and you shouldn't feel any regrets for ignoring those liars. Thank you for sharing this admirable story with us. I wish you all the best going forward. 
Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's story. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.